So in this video, I'm going to show you a very simple method for painting an oil that anybody can learn. It's very simple. We're going to be actually checking our colors right on a laminated photo, as you see me doing here, and then putting those colors where we see them. Now, I've already filmed a video on how to draw, and this is uh, also requires no talent. It's a very simple method. And I also uh, filmed a video on how to pre-mix your colors so that you have a palette of colors like you see here. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to take that palette of colors and how to put the paint onto the canvas using a very simple process of checking your colors right on a laminated photo, seeing where they go, and then putting those colors where you see them on your canvas. So we're going to work dark to light, starting with the very darkest color. And in this case, we're painting this silver cup here. So um, if we're talking about painting the cloth first, uh, we're going to paint the very darkest parts first and then uh, finish with the lightest parts. Now, it may be that um, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew, and you don't have to paint all of the background at once, but for instance, I'm going to paint this little section right here, and I'm going to do all of that, starting with the darks and moving up through my steps until I get to the very lightest color. Um, all right, the other thing um, to understand about painting is before you paint anything, you should paint some background around that thing. So for instance, in this case of this silver cup, I'm going to paint some cloth around the background and I'm going to paint a little bit of table under the, uh, under the silver cup before I actually paint the silver cup. Now, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and paint all the background because it is the background and, and the table. And then the last thing I'm going to do is the silver cup. And that seems very counterintuitive. But if you try to, if you ask me with all my experience to try to paint a silver cup or anything on just a bare canvas, even a stained canvas, um, I'm not going to be able to uh, know whether my edges are right. I, I, I won't be able to judge my values properly. So it's always best to put some background around your object first. So the way you actually paint is you fill up your brush with whatever color you're painting at, at, uh, at the time. And you go and you check on your photograph, your laminated photograph, and you put a lot of spots. And you're saying, how far to the left does this go? How far up does it go? How far down? How far to the right? Make sure that you're following your mental notes. So in other words, if you say, well, how far to the left does this color go? And you put your spots, you know, look for some sort of uh, uh, coordinates. You know, you can say, well, it's about a thumb width from the edge of the teapot or whatever it happens to be. Um, but you don't want to just be flying blind. You want to have some uh, what I call mental notes as to know, how, okay, how far up does this go? How far to the right does it go? And so you get a real good sense by putting your spots on your photo where that particular color goes, and then you go to your canvas and you paint it. And when I say paint it, I mean you don't even think. Just fill in that area with paint and then move on to the next uh, spot. And uh, one of the things I tell my students in my private class uh, that I teach here in Austin, I mean, I say it all the time in every one of my classes, once the canvas is covered, you move on. So in other words, once you've filled in a little bit of uh, canvas, you don't judge it. You don't try to decide if you like it or not. We're going to do that later. We're going to very strictly follow our color checking, checking your spots, going in, filling an area in on the canvas, and then uh, but not, not doing any blending, not doing any fixing, not deciding I don't like it or it looks wrong and going and playing with it. Once you're finished with covering the canvas with paint for a particular object, and then and only then should you be judging what you're doing. And this is really difficult because as you start to paint, you're going to be real tempted to go and fix or you think, oh, mine looks too dark or mine looks too this. But it's much better to get that canvas covered with paint based on your color checking and just putting in your spots of, of color. And then once the canvas is covered, that's when you do your judging because you're going to be in a much better uh, place to judge what you've done once the canvas is covered with paint. Let me explain just how powerful that is. If I bring somebody in uh, who, into the studio and they've never painted before and they have no, no talent or anything, they don't know anything about oil painting, and you're halfway done with your vase, and I ask that person, you know, can you tell that the shadow on their vase is too dark and it needs to be lightened up? And they'll say, oh yeah, it looks way too dark. Uh, they need to definitely lighten it up. And actually they're wrong. It's actually perfect, but they just can't see it because the canvas isn't covered. But once you get the canvas covered with paint, bring that person in, tell them to look at your vase. And I tell them, can you tell that the shadow on their vase is ever so slightly too light? And they'll say, yeah, I can see that. 
And they're actually, they're right. And that's because anybody, uh, once the canvas is covered with paint, it's real easy to see your value problems. But on the other hand, if you're uh, just working and you've only about two thirds done and you still have a bunch of blank canvas, then you uh, have a really hard time judging your values and your colors. The temptation is once the canvas is covered and you're ready to fix your object and polish it up, the temptation is to go in there and start trying to paint all the detail and get it exactly right. And, and you're trying to paint that surface texture. But the way I think when I'm painting is I look at what I'm working on and I look for the value problems. I look where mine is too dark, where it should be light, where mine is too light and it should be darker. And then I go and I fix those value problems. Um, another thing you can do is uh, with color checking is if you have an area and you're not really sure whether it should be lighter or darker, you can mix up your color, put a spot on your source photo and say, okay, that's the value, that's perfect right there. And you get a good match. And then you go to your painting and put a little spot in the area that's in question. And, and you can say, well, is mine too light or mine too dark? So you can use that as a way of gauging your values. By the way, I wanted to mention that I do teach private classes uh, here in my studio. So if you're interested in taking a private class from me or even in doing a Zoom class, email me at mark at drawmixpaint.com and I'll give you all the information about my classes. So now let me just show you the process of painting this silver cup. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start dark to light and we're going to put in each part and finish all the darks before we move on to the next step. But the actual process of painting is always going to be checking your color right on the laminated photo as you see me doing here, saying where does this go? How far to the left? How far to the right? How far up? How far down? And then once you determine where that color exists, you go to the canvas and paint in that little area. Simple as that. Now remember, we are not doing any fixing or blending at this point. We're going to save that for the end. So once the canvas is completely covered, then you can do your fixing, fix your values first, and then put in the little bit of detail if there is any on top of that. Okay, so now I'm going to paint the um, cloth behind the silver cup. And I'm starting with the blacks and just filling in, checking my blacks. And blacks are pretty easy to check because blacks are black. And I really probably should have drawn a line in there to help me out a little bit. Probably did not put quite enough lines. But you don't really need a lot of uh, lines. Um, so I'm just filling in the dark areas first, always working dark to light. And as you can see, I'm working on a stained canvas. Um, I've stained that canvas just a, a basic neutral color that's um, kind of halfway between black and white but also um, neutral in the sense that it's not yellow, it's not um, green, it's not red, it's not blue, it's just right in the middle of all the colors. And we sell this stain that I'm using at GenevaFineArt.com, um, but you can also make up your own stain, and I have a video that covers that, and the link for that video is in the description of this video. So I'm just checking my colors. Um, you know, I've pre-mixed all these colors, um, and you can go watch uh, my video on how I mix those colors. The link to that video is in the description also of this video, as well as the video on how I did my drawing. So I just divided it into three parts, drawing, color mixing, and then this is the painting. So just filling in, and you'll notice that these dark areas that I'm putting in look way darker than they do in the photo source. So when I look at them here on the photo, um, they look light enough. But when I put them on that blank canvas, it looks way dark. And this is one of the reasons why you don't want to judge your work. You want to just trust your color checking and just fill in your blanks and don't do any, um, don't, don't look at what you're doing and decide that it looks too dark. And, and try to lighten it up. You're not going to be using your eye, especially in the beginning as you get started with these shadow colors. So we're just doing a lot of checking. And I don't, I, in this video, I just kind of put spots on there and probably don't check as much as you should if you haven't done this before. I have a lot of experience and I was trying my best to demonstrate this, but, but just notice how dark everything looks. These, even these areas, um, and what I'm doing now is I'm taking a color. I don't like to blend my lights into straight black. Um, 
so I'm putting a little edge along that black that's this sort of, you know, not nearly, it's still a very dark color, but it's not black, and that will work well with the rest of the colors. So notice what I'm doing. I'm, I'm checking, I'm seeing how far up does this go, how far down does it go, and then I just come, simply come over and fill it in. And you'd be amazed at how much room for error you have. If you're just doing your color checking and basically just following along, um, you can paint very messy. You can, you can almost, you know, I call it painting ugly. But you're not attempting to paint the surface of that cloth. You go crazy if you do that. What we're doing is we're just checking our values, as you see me doing, and then just going over and filling in those parts where I see that that value exists. And um, again, I'm putting a little bit of an edge along that black. I don't want my lighter colors to just bump straight into that black because all that blue will gray everything up. So as you can see, um, you know, even as I get into these lighter colors, just notice how dark it looks on my um, on my canvas. Even though I'm doing my color correcting, uh, color checking accurately, and everything, it still looks way too dark. Even though that's exactly as it should be. These are the optical illusions that we have to deal with when we paint. Things. You can't really judge colors until they're surrounded by the, by the relative color. So once I get all this filled in, it's not going to look um, too dark. Everything's going to make sense. But especially in the beginning, you really have to trust your color checking. Well, you always have to trust your color checking. But just notice on the palette, you know, I think you think that these colors are light. And when you look at them on the photo there, they look really light. But then, as you put them in, they always look darker. It's not until we get these very lightest colors in that the cloth is going to you know, make any sense. So just filling in. And notice I'm not doing any blending. Now, some natural blending happens when you paint. Um, and I have no problem with letting my uh, you know, colors run together. And painting on top of the other color is very normal. But what you don't want to do is get in there and start playing with it and, um, you know, get second guessing what you're doing. Uh, once the canvas is covered with paint, and I really mean like for the whole cloth, then and only then am I going to go in and, you know, play with it or, or adjust any textures. So that's as simple as the process is. Start with something simple. Don't try to you know, try to paint a really complicated still life to begin with, but maybe just a single object, you know, like an apple sitting on a table or whatever, and really take your time as you start. Keep in mind that you're going to be spending a lot more time on your palette, preparing your brush, deciding what color you need in your brush, and then when it comes time to painting, it really doesn't take very long. It's just a matter of checking where those colors go and then painting them where you see them. Simple as that. But once you have the canvas covered with paint, you're ready to do any fixing that you need to do. And the first thing is always going to be to look for those value problems. Fix those value problems first. And if there's any detail that needs to go on top, like, and I'm talking about just little detail, like these little flicks on the, on the uh, silver cup here, um, those things go in after you've decided all your values are right. And uh, I actually don't like to blend and make things all smooth. You want to keep a little bit of texture on there no matter what you're painting. Um, so you have to be careful not to go too far with it. It's really a matter of just getting your values right and making any small adjustments that you need. But when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your painting, it doesn't matter what it looks like up close. It matters what it looks like from about seven feet away. I think it was Rembrandt that said paintings are for looking, not for smelling. Make sure when you're in that final workflow and you've already covered the canvas with paint, you've done all your color checking, um, make sure that you're making those judgments from seven feet away and not right up close because it's much easier to look and decide, especially looking for value problems and everything else from seven feet away. Now, a lot of people ask me what sort of brushwork sh they should have. And I actually don't care what sort of brushwork you have, other than it should be have an abstract uh, quality to it. Now, what I mean is, if you're filling in an area, don't just fill it in with a clean line 
and just, you know, and your strokes are just stroke, 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 like you're being very deliberate about it, but instead have a little bit of a, a messiness to your brushwork or, you know, where you, your edges aren't nice, clean lines, but instead they should be a little bit jaggy and a little bit, you know, messed up so that there's a little bit of abstraction in your brushwork. It's really important, and this should go without saying, that you work from a quality, glossy, laminated photograph. Um, you can work from computer monitors, but it's really almost, uh, it's very difficult to get good color matches. You'd have to use like a color checker. You have to make sure that your light is balanced with your room light where you're checking your colors and, you know, the monitor. Um, so it can be done. It's very difficult. I've tried to do it myself and it's just really difficult to set up. So the very best thing without any doubt is to work from a quality laminated uh, glossy photograph. And uh, that means, you know, when you're uh, developing the image, uh, you do it properly and that you're using a decent camera and everything else. So here's a whole bunch of other videos that I've filmed related to how to paint an oil. But keep in mind that this video that you're watching now is the core workflow for how to paint an oil. And the rest of these videos that I would recommend that you watch will be very helpful. But this is what you want to always come back to when you want to see the core instruction. And that goes for the one on how to, how to draw, the one on how to mix colors, and then this one, how to paint an oil. There are three in a series. And so that's where you really always want to um, go back to. When my students leave my private class on the last day, I always give them um, a bit of advice. And then that is that when you're confused, go back to the workflow. So if you get lost, come back and watch this video and refer to this very strict workflow. And that goes for the video on how to draw and the video on how to mix colors. And then this video also on how to paint an oil. And these are the core workflows for doing my method. Well, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.